Fuck off. What is up everyone, it's Sinatra here and welcome back to another video on the channel and we are back again with another Tumor Extra video where I find every news story, every big talking point on social media that's happened in each and every single month. So, what have I missed in the month of August? You think Harry Maguire getting arrested in Greece was a big talking story? No, 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 no. You think Lionel Messi leaving Barcelona to probably go to Man City, Paris Saint-Germain or whoever? No, 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 no. The talking story, that's what everyone talking, especially in the commentary community, is Leafy got terminated. Huh? That's it, I'm out of here. Now, if you have no idea who Leafy is, well, Leafy is here, is a commentary YouTube channel. And I would probably say the pioneer for commentary on YouTube because he was the start of it way back, it was it 2016, 2015, maybe even before then. But Leafy got terminated because of, well, I think nine videos, was it nine or ten videos? I'd lost count. Like, he made a lot of videos on one person, and YouTube thought it was against their terms of service. I understand YouTube may not like Leafy, I get that, like, I'm not a fan of the guy either, I, I don't want to see the guy cancelled, I don't want to see the guy terminated, but my problem with this is YouTube, right? YouTube, if you have a problem with Leafy, then you should have a problem with YouTubers like so, J Station, Prank Invasion, Susie Lou. You know, you don't see them getting terminated, you don't see them getting just out, thrown out like roadkill. You know, like, I, I don't actually understand why you don't get rid of them. And by the way, before anybody asks, says it, but natural, they aren't doing bad stuff. Uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, if you haven't watched my Tamir fucking series, then go watch it, because I've made videos talking about the despicable things that those three have done. And there's another story going around that YouTube don't really like commentary channels. They feel like they are the most negative of negative channels on platform. Right, so let me say this YouTube, right? If it wasn't for commentary YouTubers, Daddy05 would still be making the despicable content he is doing. Probably in today's world. You also have JStation, you're probably still making Ouija boards about celebrities' death so he can milk it for views. And other despicable people doing other despicable things. The commentary community is a, it's, it's not all about negative, sometimes they talk about positive. And people might say this series I do is commentary. I couldn't care less if you want to say this is a commentary show, whatever, I don't really care. I more just make funny entertainment comedy on YouTube. I don't really give two fine Fs if this is a commentary channel or a commentary series. YouTube do what's best for business. That's their model, YouTube, right? We do what's best for business. And what's best for business is Leafy isn't. And YouTubers who get in the trending tab, who do nice, I don't know, fucking makeup tutorials and fucking vlogs where they shove some camera down someone's damn eyes and damn throat all the time, that's what's best for business. I'm going to end it saying, I don't think Leafy should have got terminated. Do I think Leafy should have got a ban? Probably, maybe his channel, maybe she got demonetized, maybe for a week or a month or something like that. He shouldn't have got terminated. Yeah, Leafy made a lot of videos criticizing people, you know, about their looks and stuff like that. You can't do that in YouTube 2020, ladies and gentlemen. You can't. You do that. You're right. But it's, I don't really know what, it's just, it's what YouTube's become. YouTube is no longer the you on YouTube. It's what's best for them. Netflix, Netflix, Netflix. What in the sweet Mary of McGillicuddy were you thinking promoting a movie for 
Okay, I had that coming. What the hell is wrong with you, you sick I I've been doing this commercial for a while. Two and a bit years. I have never in my life have I ever seen a, co a huge company, a huge website in Netflix who have over millions upon millions of people that annually subscribe to them for a monthly subscription promote a movie where little minor 11, 12, 13, 9 year old girls posing in sexy ways What the fuck? Who the fuck's running Netflix? Fucking Prince Andrew? Perhaps. I don't know whose idea was this. Like, that is the most stupidest thing anyone can ever do, ever. Like, 2020. This year has been nothing short of one of the most disaster years, probably, ever, I've ever seen in my entire life. But you think, you know what? Last month can never be as bad as this month. And then something like this just pops in your face and you think like, what? And what makes this movie even more pathetic is the name of the movie, movie Cuties. And this movie won an award. That's right, I'm not making this up. This movie won an award. What was the fucking award? Oh, someone just reading out, I don't know, the winner. I'm the winner of the most <laughs> creepiest bitch ass movie of all time. These cuties. I just don't even know anymore. Like, oh, fucking hell. Honest to Christ of God. Wow. Wow. Of all the things I thought I'd say this year, I never thought I'd be saying something like this. Apple and Epic Games are going to war for Fortnite. Stomach. I have to do this for work. There's a game called Fortnite. I think everybody knows you for what Fortnite is. If you don't know what Fortnite is, then I, I don't know. You you really are behind on everything, to be honest, in life. Oh, that was a bit harsh. I'm not gonna lie, that was a little bit harsh. Epic Games obviously is the people who made Fortnite and Apple and along with um, Google Play are removing Fortnite from their mobile app uh, because of microtransactions and obviously um, VBOX is a microtransaction service in Fortnite. Epic Games are not happy because they don't want to have a 30% cut because Apple and Google Play are going to give them, they want the full amount but Apple and Google are not going to give that to them and there's a whole court case going on but um, it, I think this court case is set for next month in September maybe October there's, around this, there's a rumor going around they may actually wait because there's so much evidence and stuff like that but it doesn't look good for Epic Games really I don't think they're going to win this court case I don't think they're going to win this legal battle because I do believe the Apple and Epic Games partnership is finished Call of Duty have a new game coming out later this year and it is called Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Mr. Hudson, we're all aware of Perseus. We're also aware he's more myth than fact. I mean, personally, I think he's nothing more than the Russian boogeyman. Why should we take this Perseus threat seriously? I don't like them putting chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! Yes, that's right, Treyarch came out of a big trailer saying that Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, the new name for Call of Duty 2020. You couldn't ask for the most blind ass name, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I mean, literally, that is... What a remarkable, amazing title, hey Treyarch? But, uh, but look, the thing is, we all expected it was going to be new... I, I, everyone was rumored saying it was going to be the next Call of Duty game was going to be obviously this and um, but the, the big one about this is Treyarch were not even supposed to make this game this year this game is supposed to be made by Sledgehammer but because Sledgehammer made us absolute pig's ear of the fucking World War 2 and Advanced Warfare titles 
that it, it, Activision just got sick and tired of, of Sledgehammer's BS and the fact that they, they fired the two idiots who actually made World War II. Thank God, because that game was the most basic ass game ever. A monkey who's disabled in fucking Area 51 could play that fucking game. But like I said, I just don't get hyped for Call of Duty games anymore. We haven't even seen gameplay for this game yet, so I'm already questioning it, to be honest. So, yeah, I don't know. I just don't get hyped for Call of Duty games anymore. Like, when you call games out, my mates say, Hey man, you need to go and check the train. I'm like, I couldn't care less. Until I see gameplay, I'm skeptical. Alright? Simple. It, we, we may have seen gameplay maybe before this video is out. I don't really know. I mean, I was a huge Call of Duty fan back in the day. Now, it just, it just doesn't excite me anymore. Usually at the end of my videos, I have a little positive, a little wholesome video that cheers people's spirits really. But uh, today is not really going to be that type of video because obviously the tragic death of um, Tragic Bozeman, who um, everyone knows for the Bank Panther, um, an amazing actor and not just that, a remarkable human being. And it's sort of sad really. So. I decided to do a little montage just to remember the man for what an incredible actor and what an amazing human being that he was. Rest in peace, my man. Wakanda. Forever. So everyone, that's the end of another video on the channel and the end of another episode of Tumor Extra. And if you think Susan Wojcicki is an absolutely horrific CEO as being running on YouTube and you think YouTube should be run by actual people who understand YouTube, maybe a creator who actually gets YouTube, then just lean back and headbutt that motherfucking like button. Also, you can follow me on my social media platforms. The link, as usual, will be in the description. Hope you still have an amazing day out there. Stay safe and healthy too. Please like, subscribe, and then at your own, your favorite punk YouTuber is out.